السلام عليكم يعني الاول طبعا انا احب ارحب بحضراتكم يعني في بيتكم ويعني اتمنى تكونوا مقضيين معانا كام يوم كده قصدي كام يوم كنت اتمنى تقضوا معانا كام يوم بس للاسف انتوا قاعدين معانا فتره قصيره جدا يعني انا سامح علي زي ما الدكتور ايمن قدم يعني مدير مركز دراسات شيخوخه والامراض المصاحبه ليها وما زلت اسوشيت بروفيسور في جامعه كاليفورنيا قسم انستيجيا ورجعت مصر سنه السنه اللي فاتت في شهر سبعة وبدانا الحمد لله ويعني استابلشت السنتر واحنا دلوقتي اب اند رانينج واتمنى النهارده نقدم لكم في وسط الكلام كده احنا بنعمل ايه عشان لو في بوتنشال لاي يعني كولابوريشن ان شاء الله نقدر ان احنا نعمله مع بعض باذن الله احب الاول بس ان انا اقول ان انا يعني بيرسونالي اي اللي هو الهيفي ميتال توكسيسيتي لكن از ام جانا تراي تو كونفينس يو ذات هيفي ميتال توكسيسيتي شيرز ا لوت اوف ذا بايو كيمستري ذا توكسيكولوجي ذاتس اسوسييتد وذ ماني ماني اذر تايبس اوف توكسيسيتي انكلودينج بيستيسايدز اند هيربيسايدز اند ماني اذرز لايك دراج اندوس توكسيسيتي اند سو اون اند ذاتس واي ام جانا توك تو يو اباوت ذس اند جيف يو سم some of our sample of our results on uh, different types of toxicities that are implicated in human health. The, uh, uh, I don't need to go through the, uh, how polluted the, the Egyptian atmosphere and the Egyptian air and also water, water is. Probably all the Asads are on about this in the morning. But uh, in general, there is a, uh, a health-associated problem مع uh, البوليوشن it's actually it impacts every single organ in our body it's not only affecting our general health but it's also affecting our behavior and um, uh, of particular uh, importance is what happens in the brain because this is uh, of course causing a lot of issues including the memory loss uh, mental confusion and irritability there is also a, a, a big problem associated with uh, digestion problem and weight gain and obesity, and this is a new trend that's associated with the interaction between the uh, metals and toxicity of metals, heavy metals, and many other uh, uh, toxic material, and between metabolic uh, disorders. And I will try to tell you why this is the case uh, now. So what is heavy metal? We just, uh, we need to start with the, some definitions. A metal that's having an atomic weight greater than the sodium's uh, atomic weight, and the density greater than five grams per cubic centimeter uh, is considered a heavy metal. There is uh, notions of toxicity that I'm gonna uh, tell you a little later. And these are the most famous of them is including lead and cadmium and mercury. And all of these elements are imposing health risks in, in, in Egypt. Uh, many others may variably be added to the list, but uh, today I'm gonna focus on lead uh, in particular because of the relevance to the metabolic uh, syndromes and metabolic uh, issues. Normally, the, the uh, pharmacokinetics um, or the, the uh, level of, of a toxin, uh, usually in the metal, actually it clears from the blood in a specific time in a linear manner, whereas it actually clears in a biphasic manner from the urine. And this time scale can actually uh, be from few days and maybe continues for several years. So for example, in cadmium, in the case of cadmium, it can last in the blood for up to 30 years, which is really imposing a, a big problem. We're, we're gonna focus, as I said, on, on lead, and lead uh, is, is an important issue, especially or in particular uh, for, for kids and for children, because as you know, as you all know, it's actually contaminated, it's, it's present in high levels in paints and also in and plastic wares and metallic wares that are used for toy manufacturing and it is also present in many many uh, home uh, home products and this is uh, uh, this imposes really a big problem and uh, for a lack of data from the egyptian population probably we lack some sort of screening i don't know perhaps there might be some sort of studies that are screening the level of lead in, in egyptian children but i'm gonna just depict some uh, of the findings in, in the United States. Uh, the childhood lead poisoning uh, usually lead, uh, leads to learning disabilities, speech disorders, and also uh, lower IQ in general. 
there is behavioral disorders and the association is, is really established between high level of uh, lead poisoning and between uh, hyperactivity. There's also a, a, a lifelong threats or lifelong problems associated with lead toxicity, including the uh, academic failure, employment uh, uh, failure, or, uh, uh, or difficulties, socialization problems, and they found some sort of correlation between criminal record and between higher levels of lead in uh, blood of, of, of humans, and also, in particular, the exposure during childhood. The, uh, this, is, this, of course, is, is a problem to the society because it imposes expensive healthcare issues and also it raises the, uh, the amount of unemployment, uh, juvenile uh, justice and special education is also uh, needed for many of the students and that's why uh, this imposes a huge uh, economical burden on the society. So it goes without saying that we really need to find some solution to this. At least in Egypt we need to define the phenomena, we need to really follow, especially that regulations are not um, present to try to stop using high percentage of lead in paints and in many other products, including toys. So, uh, and especially also because we can see, I mean, I was, I was uh, uh, two days ago, I just by, by chance, I passed through Al Ataba, Medan Al Ataba, and طبعاً, I felt that everything is Sini, where it's the lowest grade possible. يعني عارف حاجات طبعا ايه يعني في منتهى يعني مستوى ضايع تماما وطبعا هي because of their cheap prices these are the main sources of toys, clothes and many things for 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 the Egyptians and I, I was I was really shocked because this can really impose severe health problems because of the heavy metal toxicity and many other toxicities like pl like plastics and and things like these. But how 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 lead is is affecting the, the biology. I, I'd like to take you a little bit uh, in a deeper journey towards what, ha what happens on the level of uh, subcellular uh, uh, organelles and also on the level of molecular toxicity because this is our key to understand and also our key to handle the, prob the, pr the problem. Instead of just talking about epidemiology and, and, and correlating high levels with, uh, with low performance le levels or behavioral issues, I'd like to think a little bit deeper trying to find ways to handle this problem. <laughs> so uh, lead is uh, having a high affinity for uh, sulfhydryl groups. Sulfhydryl groups are extremely important uh, substituents in, in, in the, in the um, amino acids on, on many proteins. And the sulfhydryl groups are responsive to signaling molecules uh, and they affect the functions of so many proteins. <laughs> and if you are complexing, if you attack the sulfhydryl groups and convert them into disulfide bonds instead of sulfhydryl groups, this, in, this can cause a lot of issues in regards to the function of the proteins. Many, many proteins, including those that are involved in ion channels in the brain. The other thing that, that uh, lead toxicity also interferes with is the heme synthesis pathways. Of course, hemoglobin synthesis and cytochromes are very uh, important, as you know, for oxygen delivery and trafficking in the cells. And if you have shortage of hemoglobin, you are exposed to uh, anemia and you are also exposed to shortage of energy supply in the cells that can reflect itself in terms of fatigue and general uh, 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 health issues that are related to immune in the immune system. There is also problems with the membrane integrity and this is, of course, one of the biggest and most important targets of lead toxicity. And Last but not least is the interference with the vitamin D synthesis. The vi vitamin D is now proven to be one of the major, major health risks. And this was discovered in Europe in the Scandinavian countries because they could associate uh, uh, deficiency in vitamin D3, specifically vitamin D3, with a high level of suicide attempts, with uh, depression, with high uh, prevalence and, and incidence of diabetes and also with cancer, with a lot of, uh, so many types of cancers. And now they started, the policy makers in the United States and in Europe, they started to enforce adding vitamin D3 to uh, uh, dairy uh, milks and, and also dairy products. Uh, if you are interfering with this pathway, originally I'm, I'm really sure that we are deficient in vitamin D3 because vitamin D3 cannot be taken in dietary forms, they, it's actually converted, it's actually synthesized 
in, in the cells. And, and you, need, you need to have these kind of synthesis, which doesn't happen unless you are exposed to sunlight. And of course, now we are sitting in front of the TV and doing nothing uh, but uh, talking about politics, just going nowhere. And, and so we, we, need, we really need to, to do something about vitamin D deficiency, especially uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in, the, in the children. So if you are interfering with this further by, by lead toxicity, you may expect what would happen uh, in, in many uh, cases. So the, 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 uh, all of the, the pathways, all of the mentioned pathways, and all of the pathological uh, uh, traits that we are talking about, they divert. They actually, actually converge into mitochondria. And mitochondria is the suborganelle in the cell that's responsible for energy production, and also they produce uh, a highly reactive species that's called reactive oxygen species. These are uh, common elements in any toxicity, in any known toxicity, um, just for, 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 for a guarantee. If you talk about any type of toxicity, they involve reactive oxygen species. They involve free radicals. And these pathways are important for mitochondria function and they are involved and implicated in all of these pathologies. So it is no wonder to actually to propose that mitochondria is, uh, or common, poison, common poisoning is associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. And it is known and well established in food poisoning. It's also established in anything that's associated with uh, snake or scorpion poisoning. It is known to be there for uh, toxic gases like in carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide also is important, cyanide, uh, they, know, they are known to target mitochondria uh, directly. There is also the drug-induced toxicity that also is, involved, is in involving uh, mitochondrial pathways, and there is the heavy metal poisoning. So what, what is mitochondria, or how this is involved in, in mitochondria? So imagine that the, the, the upper corner, upper right corner, is this actually including a, a cartoon for a mitochondrion, and the mitochondria, if we just magnify some part of the inner membrane, we will see that there are uh, several complexes. There is complex one, three, and you can see that two is, is, is put here, which is, it's not a mistake, but it's supposed to be uh, uh, around here. Uh, and also complex four. These complexes are, are doing something to generate energy. And, and in this, in this uh, process, just uh, and, uh, some reminder of, what, of what's happening. NADH is consumed and the protons migrate from the uh, matrix site to the outer uh, or inner uh, intermembrane space. And doing this, shuttling electrons, while shuttling electrons from one complex to the other or to the next, creates this kind of proton gradient. This proton gradient with a cross membrane here is an energy, it's actually in fact one of the highest sources of energy uh, known, uh, they actually are consumed or used up by ATP synthase to synthesize um, ATP. ATP is, is very important for cellular function. However, if, you know, in, inevitably, there are some parts of this, of this process, there is an escape of free radicals or electrons into uh, the surrounding oxygen to produce superoxide radical. Superoxide radical is they say the mother of all evil, because this is the major and the main source of free radicals or reactive oxygen species in the cell. So the, uh, the, uh, the next, uh, whenever you have some sort of problem in the cell, there is a status of oxidative stress, which means that the balance between producing free radicals, which is normally handled and under normal and physiological conditions, are handled, handled by antioxidant defense mechanisms, including enzymes like superoxide dismutase and catalases and peroxidases, and this level increases in, in, in pathological conditions and in toxicity and produce a lot of oxidative stress that can cause random cellular damage, cell death, disease, and also eventually aging. So there's no wonder that, for example, on this cover of cell that ROS molecules are controlling apoptosis, they're just like the dial here of, that controls apoptosis and also cell cycling, because now ROS are implicated in several processes of cell signaling, and they are important not only as an energy source or a combustion engine, but also to life, aging, and death. So there's no wonder to implicate heavy uh, metal toxicity in 
such a process. Okay, so how do we follow mitochondrial function? This is about what we do in the Wales City, in, in, the, in the Center for Aging. What we do is we study uh, mitochondrial function in relation to several diseases. So the several diseases, uh, including cancer, obesity, and diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, aging, and also uh, hepatobiology and cardiovascular diseases. So that's why uh, this, this was called the decade of, of, uh, of mitochondria. And how we study, how we study mitochondria. This is, these are the equipments and uh, the facilities that we have, but, but ha to study mitochondria, we need to study what's so-called respiration, because mitochondria is the primary consumer of oxygen in the cell. So we need to study at high resolution oxygen consumption, ATP production, and metabolic pathways in order to, to know whether mitochondria is functioning, functioning well or not. Again, also what type of free radicals and when they are produced, where they are produced, and what kind of damage they impose on cellular components. We also study the, uh, the role of reactive oxygen species in signaling and the role of mitochondria in signaling. So in signaling, including apoptosis and calcium signaling, which is also plays a very important role in toxicity and the reactive oxygen species. These are all components that we study in, in, uh, in the center. We have four different cores that we use in order to do our studies, including a metabolic core that's really, uh, really very cutting edge. because It, it, will, it contains some instruments that are not uh, present probably anywhere. The same collection is not present anywhere. We have also spectroscopy and imaging uh, and biophysics core. We do have molecular and cell biology uh, core, and you are welcome to come and visit us to see uh, the components and to see how we are equipped. We are, we, we are also interested in behavioral uh, uh, systems, and in just testing behavior is an important part of toxicology as well, because it may reflect on some sort, maybe there are some long-term effects that may reflect on the behavior of animals. So these are, uh, pictures of the systems that we are using to study, starting from simple molecules up to whole organelles, uh, organisms, as you can see. We have the electron paramagnetic resonance spectrometer. This, this can enable us to study uh, reactive oxygen species. This uh, system is the only system that's present in Africa and Middle East, and it, is, uh, it, it enables us to study mitochondrial function in tissues and in isolated mitochondria. This system enables us to study the uh, metabolic pathways in cells, uh, in, in a, cell, uh, in a, in a uh, multi-well plate format. We have imaging systems, we have confocal and inverted microscopes and fluorescence microscopes, and we are planning to get an electrophysiology system that would enable us to study uh, closely uh, the brain. These are uh, the systems again, uh, we have them, you are very welcome to come and, and visit. As I'm saying, we are also uh, trying to uh, prepare a lab for studying uh, animal behavior, including sleep behavior, including memory function, and uh, we can use these for following uh, tox uh, toxicological implications of specific uh, toxins, such as uh, heavy metals. I'm not going to go through details, but this is uh, showing you, for example, how to take a, uh, a muscle a biopsy, for instance, or uh, uh, any, any part of a biopsy uh, that you can take, and you can uh, just permeabilize them and try to identify the fiber, uh, the muscle fibers, and then you can use them to evaluate mitochondrial function. And the mitochondrial function is evaluated through how quickly they, they consume oxygen. And this, the blue trace here is oxygen level, and this, the red one, is the rate of consumption of oxygen at different conditions. These are controlled conditions that would enable us to understand how mitochondria is inhibited, how mitochondria is producing energy. And the other piece that, that might be very relevant to, uh, to toxicity is the electron paramagnetic resonance spectrometer. That this is a, based on how to excite electrons uh, by using uh, micro, micro frequency or micro waves. And then we measure, this is the system here, and it's, uh, it's now, you know, the, 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 uh, the first time where I saw some system like this was back in the 90s, and it actually occupied a whole room, but now it is a, a benchtop system, and it's equipped also with uh, temperature control and many other uh, accessories. So just, uh, again, so the, the, uh, the mitochondria is, is a common pathway, is a common 
player or denominator in, in all of these toxicities. And I'm going to just uh, give you a brief example on some sort of toxicity that involves free radicals or reactive oxygen species and how we are handling this. So normally what happens when you produce superoxide, it can either react with nitric oxide, which is present in, in abundance in the cells, to produce ONO or uh, peroxynitrite. This is very uh, reactive molecule, and this molecule can lead to the generation of hydroxyl radical, much more reactive, and it can attack amino acids, it can attack... Uh, uh, DNA and proteins and cause a lot of mutations and dis, uh, dysfunctions. Or it can dismutate by the help of superoxide dismutases that produces hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is handled by catalase and peroxidases to produce oxygen and water. Uh, the redox status of the cell is very important to uh, convert hydrogen peroxide again into water. However, in many cases, these antioxidant systems are not active enough to, uh, to convert hydrogen peroxide and superoxide into the relatively intoxic or the intoxic uh, materials, oxygen and, hydro, uh, and, and water. So these are the problems, peroxynitrite and superoxide. How do we handle them? Essentially, we uh, tried a system first in, in vitro to see if this system or the, if this drug can protect against superoxide radical. And the molecule is clearly able to quench a signal coming from superoxide that's generated by xanthine and xanthine oxidase metabolism. And you can see that up to 10 micromolar, you can see a complete quenching of the superoxide radical. You calculate the rate, and the rate constant is relatively high rate constant. And then you use the electron paramagnetic resonance spectro uh, spectrometry uh, or spectroscopy to monitor what's happening. Here, this is a computer simulation, but this is a system where you generate superoxide radical, and this is increasing concentration of the compound. You can see that this compound is, uh, uh, is quenching or reducing the amount of free radicals. In the cells, we, uh, we applied a specific treatment, which is an it's, a, it's 10 minutes of irradiation that produces superoxide radical, and we could see that this, the free radicals, the level of free radicals is actually quenched, almost 90% quenched by that uh, compound. Okay, so what happens on the level of cells? Uh, Paraquat is, is a known uh, herbicide, and it's actually known to be toxic through the generation of superoxide radical. And you can see that when you treat your cells, it quenches the growth of the cells. It actually inhibits cell growth, as you can see. And uh, this is the, uh, the control, and this is the uh, paraquat treated, uh, uh, treated cells, and this is when you uh, use your, the compound that I showed you, you can rescue almost 50 to 60% of the, of the cells. Same thing happens in a different type of, uh, of cells. We could also see that using that compound is reducing the uh, apoptose, uh, apoptosis signaling molecules, which is a, a, a cleaved caspase 3. And you can see that usage of uh, the, uh, the compound C reduces the level of caspase 3, indicating that this molecule can reverse a toxicity that's produced by superoxide and potentially would do so also in case of uh, heavy metal toxicity. This is showing us a uh, level of nitric oxide signal. You remember that nitric oxide reacts with superoxide to produce peroxynitrite, which is highly reactive and can cause so cell death. But when we, when we used these, these, uh, the, the, the compound itself at 100 micromolar, we could see that the nitric oxide signal is reduced. And again, if you do this, in the, uh, pr in, in the presence of these uh, compounds, but added pre-irradiation, this is post-irradiation, which is very important because this indicates that you can use this compound to protect even post-exposure to the toxin. And this is of potential high interest. So we moved forward and used the same compound to test toxicity, the paraquat-associated toxicity, in uh, some uh, animals. This is, this is the uh, Drosophila flies. Uh, and we could see that exposure to paraquat kills, this is the, 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 the survival rate. And this is the control. The um, triangles are, the actual squares are paraquat treated. And you can see that there is a, almost 80% uh, uh, death. But then you can rescue this in the presence of this compound, even in the on the level of whole organism. So this, this just opens the door for us to try to find ways not only to uh, 
report what happens in the cells, but also to try to propose and suggest ways to alleviate uh, the uh, toxicity through uh, manipulating reactive oxygen species. So the conclusion is that heavy metals impose expensive health and, and socio socioeconomic burdens on the society. Mitochondria are primary and common targets for uh, uh, heavy metal toxicity and other types of tox uh, toxicities. Increasing evidence implicates high level uh, or uh, uh, heavy metal toxicity and other toxins and pollutants in metabolic dysregulations, of course, because when you inhibit mitochondria, this can lead also to problems associated with metabolism. Uh, intervention strategies are possible and can, can, and can be designed to alleviate the uh, pathophysiology and, and acute and chronic exposures. And uh, we need some uh, epidemiological screenings in Egypt uh, in order for us to know exactly if there are some correlations between the level of lead and between the uh, metabolic disorders uh, like obesity um, and diabetes. And I'd like to thank you all for, for your attention.